Prince, we have started our monthly and bi monthly meetings by the special grace of God. Only our crusades we hold on. In out disciple programs will also resume in earnest. So, second Sunday of every month is for the mentorship and discipleship meeting, equipping the saint ETS. We we'll continue with our studies where we have stopped. We want to be grooming, developing, and raising men for end time revival. Last Sunday of the month, between 4 and 6 30 p.m., we have a time of worship like we are doing now, and then family breakthrough service where we will pray together for our families, intercede, and then release you to go. When is this? at the pastoral counseling time from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. So we should take note of all of those arrangements. And when you are coming, don't wait for bills and publicity. Invite your friends. God has given us a place that can accommodate social distancing, and we have also taken precautions. We have the thermometer to check, but we believe this will not be our portion. Evil will not be our portion in Jesus' name. And uh, by the grace of God, the Lord will continue to preserve us into his eternal kingdom in Jesus' name. Father, we ask that you bless us as we look at your word. Those who are following us in all our centers, we ask that you will bless them also in Jesus' name. If you don't have on the screen from Matthew, Chapter 14. Our team for today's family breakthrough meeting is Jesus, the great provider. That name is so charming, that name is so exciting, that name is full of life. And that is why, virtually every one of our messages, we are concerned Jesus. It's our focus because he is the totality of the gospel. Everything rises and falls. With Jesus Christ. He is the propitiator of our soul. He is our advocate. He is the Son of God, the Savior and the Redeemer of mankind. So, in every situation we find ourselves, He is the Lord of the mountain, He is the Lord of the valley. He is always there in the day, He is there at noon, and He is there at night. All around our country, the world as a globe is going through today. I like to let you know Jesus is still Lord. Come to your neighbor and say, Jesus is still Lord. Jesus. I want to hear you again say it loud. Jesus. Say it let me hear you one more time. I'm reading from Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14, verse 18. And when it was evening time, his disciples came to him saying, This is the letter place, and the train is now past. Send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. And Jesus said unto them in verse 16, They need not depart, give me them. To eat. And then they said unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. Jesus said, Bring them here to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up to heaven. He blessed and prayed and gave the Lord to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up of the fragments that remained twelve baskets full. The event that I just read to me. Is one of the wonders of our Savior during his earthly ministry here on earth. 
Et puis, il y a une autre Les gilets, le cycle, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, but he also provided for the people. The Lord Jesus Christ here has the welfare, spiritual and physical welfare of his people at heart. He has just conducted a seminar that lasted three days. The people departed to him and resided in the desert. Now the disciples came to him, Master. We have a challenge in the house. These people have been here for a long time and it is already getting late. By now, they will be hungry. So let's share grace and release them to go to the villages. Let everybody go and sort himself out. Let them buy victuals to feed their children and their family. And then Jesus Christ said, you are curious about the need of the masses, but I am compassionate about their needs. That is to encourage you, dear brothers and sisters, that whatever you may be going through, I know you are going through something, because we understand the difficulties of our time. We know that the occasioned economic meltdown Scarcity of food, hunger, and peril in the land occasioned by the lockdown or pandemic. Even before then, Nigeria was already a hungry nation. But now, everything had given way. And we know there is stress on our family. I'm here just to encourage you tonight. The Savior cares. Jesus Christ is the great provider. People would depend on salaries before. Right now, their salaries are failing them. Somebody was earning 150000 as his net salary. That means when you do all the deductions, what it takes home for his family as of January and February this year, was 150,000 in a month. So he could plan the budget of the family capital recurring overhead costs with that budget. Then by March, they said, many people have to be laid off. Those of you that are remaining, we will give you 50% of your salary. Some were begrudging the authority they don't know it has just started. By this month of June, I think which day is it? Today is Sunday. When is there or two, he was sharing with me that his salary has reduced from 150000 in a month take home, plus tax and VAT. Everything is about 205. It reduced to 150 as his monthly take home. But he said, right now, my pay slip for the month of June is 25,000. Now, I have sold one of my car. The second car, I can't even maintain. We are hungry in the house. Where are we going? These are the kinds of uncertainty that is on the land. But I want to encourage you as your pastor and discipler that by the grace of God, you must renew your faith. You're confident in him because we are not even there yet. So as you look at this beautiful story, I'm not going to preach tonight. We'll be very brief. But I will always look for something for you to hold home. One, you will see the curious request of the disciples. They made a curious request from the master. Their request was born out of curiosity. And that is the first thing I want us to quickly look at. One, the curious request of the disciples. Two, the compassionate response of the Savior. They brought a curious request. He had a compassionate response. And number three, the reality 
of the great provider. I'd like to let you know that up till today, our God is still doing good. Can I hear a good amen? amen? Even today, our God is still in the business of supernaturally providing, lifting up those that are cast down. The windows of heaven are not yet shut down at all. If you can connect your faith to what I'm telling you tonight, and what he has led us to do tonight, I am telling you, heaven will supply your need. In the Old Testament, we had times of needs, times of famine, times of pestilences, and God was always rising to the occasion. In the time of the patriarchs, like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and so on, they also had their own share of life's crisis. The needs came. Pandemics came. Floods and disasters came. In the camp of the Israelites, they also had their own time of, it may not be pandemic, but it was epidemic. It was there. Serpent was biting them. They were dying. There were no vaccines to cure them. Moses cried to him. And then there is what we call epiphany, Christophany. The misery of Jesus Christ appeared in the wilderness. And he said, make a praising serpent. Your solution to this venom, biting and killing, is not in man, but is in looking up. And he said, whosoever is beaten, when you look up, you will be redeemed. You will be released. And you will be fortified. And it came to pass. In the time of Isaac, there was great famine in the land. Beside the first famine, Isaac wanted to go down. Don't migrate. Don't move up and down. Your source is not in going up and down. Your source is from Jesus, the great provider. And he will surpass your imagination tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. He had enough. He went forward. He became great, and the Philistines envied him. He sowed in the land, he did not reap, but he received. That means it was not his labor, his struggle. It wasn't his human effort that blossomed, caused him to blossom. No, God was quietly at work. I am praying for a family under the sound of my voice, directly or wherever you are connected to us live. This same God will arise mightily on your behalf in Jesus' name. In the New Testament, at various times, Jesus Christ proved his providential power before his disciples, before the multitude, even before the opponents of his ministry, the Sahindrins, the Pharisees, and the scribes. The Roman tax collectors, at various times, you remember when they confronted him and said, you have to pay your tax. And they requested for money. There was no money in the purse. We didn't know what Judas did with the money. But Jesus was not moved by that. He only moved them to the sea by Tiberias and called out a fish. J-E-S-U-S, -E and the fish vomit money. You know, you cannot be in a place like America, and you enter a store, you buy a product, and then you are bringing Nigerian Naira. Once you fly out of Muritala or Namdi, your money is not known anywhere. It's so bad. The fish brought the type of currency he needed at that time, the exact amount, and paid off their bill. If Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, his supernatural power to provide, his providential power will work for you in Jesus' name. I need a believing amen. amen. So I come to that story as I close. Number one, you will see the curious request of the disciples. They came to him. They were curious. And if you look at our modern world today, there is this high intensity of curiosity we are all worried. We are encumbered. We are filled with anxiety. 
We are troubled. What befalls us tomorrow? Everybody is looking dejected, frustrated, hopeless, not knowing what tomorrow holds, but I have a good news for you. I may not know tomorrow, but one thing I know, he who holds tomorrow holds my hand. Your economy does not depend on the policies and maladministration of our current government anywhere in the world. Excuse me, if you put your hope on politicians, especially on the government of the day, you will be roundedly disappointed. Because even they themselves, policy makers, they are confused. But there is somebody who owns your life. There is somebody who loves you beyond your widest imagination. Don't be curious. Don't be worried like unbelievers. Don't allow your heart to be tempered and pampered. Don't be scared of what tomorrow holds. Look up to the Savior. Jesus is still on the throne. He is a great provider. Can I tell you, if everything run, run, run and crash to the ground, I'm not moved because I will look up to the hills. From where cometh my help? My help cometh from the Father. But the disciples here didn't know that. They were only concerned. Hey, where will these people pay school fees? How will they pay house rent? Family of six, how are they going to feed tomorrow? Maybe that is the kind of curious mind you have now. The disciples came like that. But thank God because we have a compassionate Savior. His name is Jesus Christ. He said, if you allow these people to go, they have not been paid salary for months. So where will they get money to buy? Even when you, get, you have money, purchasing power has failed. Money is no longer answerable to our modern world. You go to your robot load or to full stop. You want to buy something, something you bought, maybe 500 naira, three months ago. If you go there now, you may need them out over a thousand naira. Do you see the confusion? If it is that, okay, your salary is increasing, then you say there is inflation. But your salary is reducing, purchasing power is dropping. Cost of goods and services are skyrocketing. In the midst of that, what hope lies for you? Put, please put your hope on the compassionate Savior. Don't fight your husband. Don't fight your wife and say, the money I give you, where is it? Money is not answerable again. Don't fight your husband and say, look, we tear this thing apart. Look at the children, they need, don't go, where are you going? You are going to work, bring your Agbada here, you pull him back and say, let's sit together. Your daddy is going, no, you better block him. And then daddy, daddy, what is this? Stomach is paining me, you know that stomach, they need food. And you look at the store, at such a point, remember what I'm teaching you today. The compassionate savior is always there. And can I speak to your life? He will do something great, supernaturally, he will open windows of heaven. As we close the end of this month, please go and mark it. You know I don't play with my words here. The God of heaven is going to visit you. He's going to surpass your imagination. He will open doors where you least expected. Divine helpers will locate your way. You have 5,000 men. Apart from wives and children, some have as much as five, six children. So when you do everything, theologians told us there were about 13,600 people gathered. And he said, don't let them go. I want to demonstrate my providential power. I want to pray for every family under the sound of my voice, wherever you are, under the sound of the voice of the Lord, Rider. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, His providential power will reach out to you. His sufficiency power will reach out to you. His supplying power will reach out to you. 
So they said, Savior, what we have is just five loaves of bread and two loaves of fishes. There is no arithmetic. There is no degree in catering service in the university that can make you to boil five bread and feed 5,000 men apart from our wives and children. He said, what I'm going to do is not human calculation. If you are living on human calculation, I'm expecting my salary next week. I'm expecting pension array. I'm expecting this one. Your expectations will last without result. But the moment you look away from your purse, you look away from your bank account, that is how I live my life, a day at a time. I just look unto him. Once I say, this is the direction, Lord, is this from you, it's from you, how do we finance it? I leave it for him. And that same God who have not failed me, I transfer that grace into you, you will experience it. So he said, make them sit down the way you are seated now. They are much more, more than us at that time. So look at the order, the sequence. The disciples obeyed. I hope I'm raising leaders that will be obedient to leadership. That you don't have to find out pastoral instruction. Once I have received the divine blueprint and I say move, don't argue. Don't say, how is it going to be? They just obeyed. And a lad that had just five loaves of bread and two loaves of fishes surrendered it. When God wants to do a miracle, all he needs is a seed to make it happen. Somebody surrender that seed. May you be that person in the house in Jesus' name. And Jesus took it. <laughs> what did he do with it? He blessed it. You know there is a misery there. I'm just exalting you tonight. I'm not preaching for long. I will have pieces that one, but it's for another day. He took it. He blessed it. That means that God that we serve does not eat fish and bread in heaven. You know that. He doesn't need dress. He exists in his own class. He's all you can't find him out. So what you need to be you before you are born into this world, can I tell you, he has provided it. The moment you get saved, that is why if you are not saved, you must connect to the redemptive work of Jesus. Because the moment you are saved, all you have done is to connect to the common weight of heaven. And he said, he will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So he made them sit down. And number three, look at the reality there. Bring them hither to me, verse 18. They brought it. He broke it. And then gave it to his disciples. Please follow the sequence. He gave it to his disciples. And his disciples went. And then when they get to rule one, they will break the bread and give. Break the bread and give. If they break 2 kg, 20 kg will grow out. By the time they finish, they have 12 baskets remaining. That is a misery to the church. The 12 tribe of Israel, the 12 disciples, those who yoke their faith, what he fed them with there became a contact point. You know what Jesus was doing? Saying that, look at these 12 baskets remaining. 12 disciples, take one, one. Wherever you find yourself. And I'm asking myself. Jesus took five loaves. And fed 13,600 people. And now. He is giving one disciple. A basket of the loaves and fish. What 13,000 people ate. At a go. I don't know how many years it will take you to eat it. Before it finish. And now you have a whole full basket. That is infinity. All he's telling you is that let government tumble upside down. Let things go a wire. Let everything collapse. The God you serve will not let you down. Can I hear a believing amen? amen? So I want to encourage you. We know there is challenge in the land. 
We are even, we, we can't count again. Today alone, how many text messages? Every day, far and near. Even some we don't know before. They copy your number online and then they send text message. But can I talk to you? He who feeds the sparrows. Why should I feel this courage? Why should the tempter come? Why should my heart be longing? Seeking I have now. When Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he. For his eyes is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. For his eyes is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. I sing, I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. Hmm. For his eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. He watches you. He will not let you down. Rise up upon your feet and just give him praise. Don't say, God, are you there? Where have you up? What is happening? Don't ask him what is happening. Just praise him because he cares. Sing that song again. Praise him because he cares. If he watches over the sparrow, he watches over you. He will not let you down. He will see you through. By the grace of God, he will sustain you. I know. He watches. I sing, I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. Oh, it's all the spiral. Oh, yes, I, I know. know. If you know he watches you, I want you to confess that to your God. Confess it to him. Lord, I know you are there for me. You will, I will not be let down. Whatever happens, I will not. But as well, I won't be consumed by the tides of the time. Joseph. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. When Jesus yes. is my portion, my constant friend is He. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know. I sing, I sing, I sing, I, I sing. sing.
yeah. I know, I know yeah. you want just me. Amen. If you believe, it will not let you down. Say a big amen. amen. If you believe, he who speeds the sparrow will feed you. We take care of you, shout a bigger amen. amen. You have been hearing someone every day. You have heard.